by special recording. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal ready to eat, and Wheaties, breakfast of champions, present The Lone Ranger. horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you still there? Away! Bobby is a boy of nine. He can really hit that line. He's the star because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Sure, Cheerios, the cereal that's fun to eat because it's shaped like little letter O's. The only ready-to-eat oat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. And listen... Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So every morning, get going and keep going with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. The Lone Ranger and Toto were riding through a dense forest in search of a place to camp when they heard several horsemen approaching. They found concealment behind thick underbrush and watched four men ride past. The gunslingers must be hiding somewhere. This woods is a likely place. If they're in this woods, we'll find them. How many searching parties are there? Four that I know of. Maybe four. The sheriff was still asking for help when we left Wellsville. Come on there. At least four searching parties. I'm going into Wellsville and find out what started the manhunt. The Lone Ranger removed his mask and by the skillful use of makeup, added years to his appearance. Then he dressed in well-worn clothing that made him look like a middle-aged prospector. It was late afternoon when he rode into Wellsville on Toto's paint horse, leaving Toto and the mighty silver in camp nearby. Oh, Scout, oh, easy. He dismounted and tied Scout to the hitch rail in front of the largest building. Half of the building was occupied by the Wellsville office of the Wells, Wells Fargo Express. The other half was marked by a sign reading, Ma Martin's General Store. The Lone Ranger entered the store. you want, mister, and leave the cash on the counter. I'm heating some soup here on the stove, and I've got to watch it. That's not a very satisfactory stove for cooking. No, and my storeroom in back is not the place you choose for a hospital, but it's the best I can do. A hospital? Yep, that's where they carried the guard and the driver. What guard and driver? Wells Fargo. Mean to say you didn't hear about the holdup? I just arrived in town. I didn't know there'd been a holdup. Yep. Crooks bushwhacked the stagecoach a few miles east of here. The horses brought in the coach with the guard and driver wounded and unconscious. They were both taken to my storeroom. Well, maybe I can help. I know something about treating bullet wounds. Thanks, mister, but the doc was here. Oh. He dug out the bullets and dressed the wounds. He said both men will recover. In fact, Bart Hanley is already able to sit up and talk. Jim Riggs is with him. Bart Hanley? He was driving the stage. 
I uh, wonder if the crooks got away with enough to make the attack worthwhile. Five thousand dollars in gold coins is nothing to sneeze at. Mm, that's a lot of money. Oh, hello, Dave. Come on in. That's Bart Hanley's boy. I see. Did you bring the buckboard, Dave? Yes, sir. It's out in front. I brought lots of blankets so Dad will keep warm. I still think your dad should stay here where he'll have care and watching until he's stronger. Oh, I'll take care of him, Mrs. Martin. He wants to go home. Yep, and there's no use arguing with anyone as stubborn as Bart Hanley. But just the same, I don't think a man in his condition should be on that isolated ranch. We like it there. Besides, there's lots of work to be done. Do you and your father live there alone? Oh, yes, sir. We're alone right now. Dave sleeps here in town when his father's on a stage run. I stay with Mr. Riggs. He's Dad's boss. Uh, your dad's still in the back room, Dave. Go and see if his mind's still set on going home. Yes, sir. Is the mother dead? No, she's with her sister in Denver. See. She was at the ranch for a while, but life there was too rough, and her health gave out. Bart's been using his Wells Fargo pay to build up the place so Julie can return. He and Dave have worked mighty hard. They deserve a lot of credit. Yes, they certainly do. When Bart's on a run, Dave stays at Riggs' house, but he's up before dawn every morning. He rides to the ranch, feeds the chickens and does the chores, then returns in time for school. After school, he goes back again and works till dark. Oh, he's a fine lad. I don't care what you say, Riggs. I know what I thought. <laughs> Sounds like Bart is feeling spunky. That's a good sign. Well, come on, Dave. We'll get out of here. Bart, you shouldn't be walking. Oh, don't you try to tell me what to do. Now, calm down. Please, Dad, don't get excited. Take it easy, Bart. All right, all right. But don't say I can't remember the face I saw. Bandana that covered the face of one of those crooks slipped down and I saw him. And then you... <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm as weak as a kitten. You shouldn't be on your feet. Want to lie down? No. I'll help you to the buckboard. Open the door, Dave. Yes, sir. Uh, the buckboard's right over here. Walk slowly and lean on me. I'm going gunning for that crook. As soon as I get my strength back. If he knows you saw his face, he might be gunning for you. I'll take that chance. Gosh, Dad, if we only knew where to find your mask, friend... I'll bet he'd find those crooks in no time. Oh, masked friend? Oh, pay no attention to Dave. I, I, I've i been telling him a few stories. The Lone Ranger is one of Dad's best friends. Yeah, yeah. I'll bet you've heard of the Lone Ranger, haven't you, mister? Yes, I have. Here's the buckboard. I'll help you aboard. Yeah. Are you sure you feel stronger than Yes, you? don't worry about me, son. <coughs> oh, it's good to sit down. Thanks for the help, mister. You're welcome. Come on, get it. The Lone Ranger made a few purchases in Ma Martin's store, then hurried back to the small camp where Toto waited. Oh, Scott, oh, easy, silly. While he washed his hands and face, changed into his familiar clothing, and fastened on his mask, the Lone Ranger told what he knew about the robbery and about Bart Hanley. And the outlaws know that Hanley can identify one of their group. Maybe them cry, kill him. That's the logical move. That's why we're going to Bart Hanley's ranch. Ah, we still have to dodge Lawman. We'll manage. We've only a couple of miles to go, and it will soon be dark. You ready? Uh, you ready? Get ready. Monson, let him up. Oh. Bart felt considerably stronger by the time he reached home, and he was able to enter the small house unassisted. Dave unhitched the horse, led it into the barn, and filled the feed box. Then he attended to the other chores. By the time he finished, night had fallen and the moon was rising. The boy was on his way from the barn to the back door of the house when he heard hoofbeats. Hey. He halted and looked in that direction. Two men were approaching. As they drew near, Dave saw that one rode a snow-white horse and wore a mask. Who's it? Who's Silver. Hello there. This the Hanley Ranch? Yes, sir. Then you must be Dave Hanley. I've heard about you. And your father may have told you about me. Has he ever mentioned the Lone Ranger? Oh, golly. I, I wondered when I saw your mask and heard you call that white horse silver. Well, this is my friend, Toto. Oh, Dave. Me hear plenty good things about you. Chimney, I'm glad to meet you. Both of you. My my dad was hurt. Yes, but... yes, we know about it. Will you help Toto feed and water our horses while I go inside and talk to your father? Oh, sure, sure thing. I'll go back to the barn and light the lantern. Keep the boy out of the house for a few minutes, Toto. Oh, uh, The Lone Ranger entered the back door, 
walked softly through the kitchen and entered the living room, where he saw Bart Henley dozing in a chair. Bart, wake up. Yeah. Wake up. Oh, uh, mask, what? Dave, uh, Dave says you consider the Lone Ranger a friend. The Lone Ranger? I'd like to be your friend, Bart. Todd and I came here to help you. Uh, I must be dreaming. No, you're wide awake. Where's Dave? Where's my son? In the barn, helping Tonto take care of our horses, Scout and Silver. Tonto and Silver? Ivory handled guns. And silver bullets. Like this. You are the Lone Ranger. I. Boy, it's curious, but somehow I feel as if I'd met you before. Bart, the men who robbed the stagecoach know that you can identify one of the gang. You doggone right. I'll know that critter if I ever see him again. Because of that, the gang may come here to try to kill you. That's why Tonto and I are here. If those crooks come, they'll face more guns than they expect. <laughs> By Juniper, that'll be something. There may be lots of gunplay. Oh, there were only three highwaymen. Three men can do a lot of shooting. Dave should be away from here. You don't want to risk his life? Gosh, no. I've heard that he stays in town while you're away. Yep, he stays with Jim Riggs, the Wells Fargo manager. It might be wise to send him there tonight. And Dave won't like leaving us. I'm sure he'll go willingly if he knows you want him to. Well, do you think it'll be safe for him to make the trip alone? Tonto will go with him. Oh, good. As soon as Dave's gone, we'll prepare a reception for a killer. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Cowboy Tom is a boy of six. He knows all kinds of cowboy tricks. He can rope a steer because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. Cheerios! Cheerios! And so will you, once you're eating Cheerios every breakfast. You'll say the Cheerios taste simply wonderful, too. They're already cooked, shaped like little round O's, and just full of good toasted oat flavor. Pour out a big bowl full, add fresh milk, and pitch in. You can almost feel the go power. For a Cheerios breakfast is one of the finest ways you can get the vitamins, proteins, and minerals your body needs. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day right. Helps give you the good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Go power. You'll get it from Cheerios. Try it and folks will say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. Tonto rode to town with Dave and left the boy at Jim Riggs' home. Neither he nor anyone else suspected that Riggs was actually the man who had planned the stagecoach robbery and the one who had given orders to kill Dave's father. Riggs was working overtime in the Wells Fargo office while the three gunmen who took orders from him met in a room on the first floor of the Wellsville Hotel. There's no use arguing with me about it, Jake. I'm just passing on Riggs' orders. When did you see him? Just a little while ago in the Wells Fargo office. He said you let Bart Hanley see your face, so uh, you'd have to kill him. But, Grin, why can't you and Hank go with me? The boss wants you to go along. He said it might teach you to be more careful on our next job. Oh, all right, I'll go. What about the boy, Hanley's son? There's no reason to shoot him unless he sees your face when you gun Bart. All right. I'll get started right away. Yeah. Hey, Grid, was it on the level what you told Jake? Did Riggs really say he should go to Hanley's place alone? Riggs wants me to think he's alone. But you and I are to follow him at a distance. After Jake shoots Hanley, we're to shoot Jake. Jake's too careless for our outfit. Let's go. There were no lamps burning in the Hanley home. But the moonlight slanting through the window was sufficient to reveal a blanket-covered form on Bart's bed. It was merely a dummy. Bart was in another room with the Lone Ranger and Tato. The three were watching beneath the nearly closed shades of windows on the same side of the house as the bedroom window. Presently, Tato said, "We see, fella, Kimasabi. Where? To the left, Bart. He's on foot. 
Yes, I see him. He's coming from the woods. Jake held his pistol in one hand as he walked slowly and nervously across the open field between the woods and the ranch house. Meanwhile, in the woods, Hank and Greer drew rein beside Jake's horse. They dismounted and took their rifles from the saddle scabbards. If we're going the rest of the way on foot, we better hurry. Yes. When the two outlaws reached the edge of the woods and peered through the screen of underbrush, they saw Jake nearing the house. We should have no trouble getting Jake with our rifles. Get ready. In the living room of the house, Bart watched beneath the drawn shade of one window while the Lone Ranger and Tonto were together at the other. Him at bedroom window now. Let him shoot before we capture him. Then we'll have proof of attempted murder. Ah, me savvy. As soon as he fires, you raise the shade and I'll smash this window. Uh Ah, Drop your gun, you're covered. Shoot the pole, caddy, ass for it. You... Drop that gun. <laughs> Kimasabi, someone shoot from woods? Rifles. You see rifles flash. Look like two guns there. Don't fire. We don't know who's behind those rifles. Uh, they shot the critter who came to kill me. Who do you suppose they are? I don't know, but I'm going to try to find out. How to see if anything can be done for the man out there on the ground. Uh-huh. Rushing from the house, the masked man ran to the barn. He didn't wait to saddle his horse. He leaped to Silver's bare hey. back and shouted, Monster! A half an hour later, when the Lone Ranger returned to the house, he saw Tonto attending to the wounds of a man who lay on the living room couch while Bart held a basin of water. How is he, Tonto? Him alive, but hurt. Plenty bad. He's the critter I saw at the stagecoach holdup. One of the thieves. Yeah. And how'd you make out? Did you see anything of those riflemen? No, there was moonlight enough at the edge of the woods to show where they were crouched behind the underbrush. They'd gone by the time I got there. Oh. 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 Uh, Eyelids move, Kimasabi. Maybe he's going to get conscious. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh. Can you hear me? Uh, uh, where? What's your name? Who's you? You don't know me, but you know Bart Henley. Move, I can see you, Bart. Sure. Now, take a look at me, you polecat. Oh, you're, you're alive. You doggone right I'm alive. Bro. But there's three bullets in the bed where you thought I was sleeping. You who shot me? No. You were shot by two men who were hidden in the woods. Oh, that dirty polecat. Who shot you, Jake? Uh, must have been the men who were with me in the sticker. They're the only ones who knew I was coming here. Yeah. The only ones aside from the boss. They shot me so they wouldn't have to split the cash with me. Name those men. I promise they'll pay for what they've done. I'm not a squealer, but I'll name them. One's Hank Newton. The other's Grid Larkin. You'll find them tonight at the home of the boss. Who is the boss? He had big plans. We're all going to get rich by robbing stages. They planned everything. Who is the boss? Tonight, those double crosses be laughing about the way they got rid of me. Well, they were the boss putting the cash. Get him, mister. You'll find him at Jim Riggs' house. Jim Riggs? Jim Riggs. That where Dave well, goes at that house. Bart, keep your gun in your hand and watch this man. But Dave... Toto and I are on the way to Riggs' house. Come on, Toto. Uh-huh. In Jim Riggs' home, Dave occupied a small room off the living room. Lying in the darkness, he relived the thrill of meeting the Lone Ranger and remembered all the heroic things his father had told him about the famous masked man. He found it impossible to relax and go to sleep. It seemed like hours after he had gone to bed when he heard the front door of the house open and close, then heard voices in the living room and Riggs saying, Come in, boys. I'll light the lamp so we can see what we're doing. Yeah, give us plenty of light, boss. We don't want to be shortchanged when the cash is counted out. <laughs> Where is the cash? Right in that chest next to the wall. Here, Hank, take the key and open it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, a lot of folks would be surprised to know that it never went aboard the stagecoach. What did you do with the strong box you took from the stage? Toss it into a quicksand box. Yeah, here's the cash. Should I open the sack? Just a minute. You didn't tell me how you made out at the Hanley place. Well, not as well as we'd hoped, boss. We saw Jake shoot Hanley, then we shot Jake. Yeah. But before we could go to the house to make sure they were both dead, the man on a white horse came riding toward the woods where we were hiding. Who? We don't know who he was. We didn't wait to see. We ran to our horses and cleared out. Mm, I don't like that. Now we don't know whether Hanley and Jake are dead or alive. And as for that man... Uh... 
What's the matter, boss? That cap on the table belongs to Dave Hanley. Huh? What about it? It means that he's here. Wait till I look in the next room. You! Oh, I, Mr. Riggs, I, I just woke up. How did you? Where did he come from? How'd you get here? Why, the same as usual. I, I had my key... And you killed my dad. Oh, you did hear what we were saying. You were in with the crooks who robbed the stagecoach. Hey, you heard everything we said. Yeah. Now what'll we do? Think you... we'll let this boy spoil our game? Oh, Here, you... rip this pillowcase. We'll tie and gag him. Then we'll no. get... get back there. Let me go. Let me go, I tell you. you. Please, help. Shut him up. I've got him. I... No, hurry and get something to tie him. Uh, just a second. <laughs> uh, here's one strip. Hold his feet, Hank. Hey. Yeah, I got him. Let him go. Oh, hey. Mask. Stand back and get your hands up. Like please. Oh, hey. Me help, Dave. Why, you... Me pick you, Riggs. Oh, the sheriff. No, no, don't shoot, don't shoot. My arm is smashed. You, Riggs, get up. Uh, Redskin hit me. On your feet. Uh, How about your handcuffs, Sheriff? I have only one pair. I'll need them for this critter. Now rip up that cloth and tie the others. Uh, they, they killed my dad. No, no, Dave. Your dad is fine. He's what? at the house guarding the other member of their gang. But then Jake's not dead? No. He told us about this meeting in your home, Riggs. That double-crosser. That's what he called you. I couldn't believe it when a masked man told me about you, Riggs. But he persuaded me to come here with him. I'm glad I did. Hey, sure. Here's your deputy. Uh, you found him, eh, Ma? Fine. What's this? Riggs, what's happened to you? Riggs, Scott, looks like a fight. Boys, take these crooks to jail and lock this sack of money in my office safe. All right, sir. I've got to take Dave and a doctor to the Hanley Ranch. When I return, I'll have a fourth crook for the calaboose. Come on, Dave. Hey. Where'd he go? Hey, Dave! I'm in the kitchen, Sheriff. We're going out the back way. Is that masked man with you? He and Connor are already outside. I'm going to leave my horse here and ride back to the ranch on Silver. Silver? What's the lad talking about? Silver and the masked man. And Tonto. I savvy. Maybe the excitement was too much for him. <laughs> excitement? His biggest excitement is still to come. He's going to ride on Silver with the Lone Ranger. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. It helps a guy feel confident just knowing that champions are made, not born. Otto Graham, famed quarterback for the Cleveland Browns, made himself a champ. Listen. Young Otto, on his way to fame, found football was no sissy game. Took power and speed and head work, too. And Graham learned, as champions do, that Wheaties help a guy come through. Now Otto passes for that score and still eats Wheaties even more. Otto Graham's been calling the right breakfast signal for 23 years. A big bowl of Wheaties. He-Man breakfast? There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Touchdown, Otto. Let's go, boy. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen.